This is the Free Hill Life Podcast, episode number 59. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Hill Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And good morning and welcome to Monday, everybody. I'm back. And uh, man, we're nearing that 60th episode. And I think that's, uh, I guess we're over the year mark. I guess I can't count how many weeks are in a year. <laughs> We've made it a year. So that's that's amazing. It's been flying by and things have been kind of busy, so I guess I haven't really paid attention to, um, I don't know, it's kind of like, the. I guess the number seems like it should be significant every week when I do this, and I start off and I'm like, episode number or whatever, and then I'm like, yeah, that's a cool number. <laughs> so anyways, episode 59, and uh, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just great to be here and great to sit down and... I'm going to be rolling solo. We're going to do mailbag episode number six, and I've got lots of questions, comments, and all the goodies that come into the mailbox. Uh, as it's gotten busier, I uh, full disclosure, I've gotten behind on my emails because it just gets too nutty during the winter, and I'm I probably need like a little I need like a, a telemark podcast assistant or something to help me get through the emails and make sure that they stay on me to get back to you guys. But I'm going to try and use some of those as uh, ways to answer questions that maybe other people have. And hopefully I'll get caught up one of these days. I feel like it's going to be spring all of a sudden. I'm going to be talking about next winter and it, that seems to be the the cycle is... It just goes really quick, but I've been skiing too. So that's, uh, it's been good. I got up and, uh, been doing some skiing with the rest of the shop crew up at Alta here in Utah. It's been pretty good. Um, I mean, it's, it's not the deepest year, but it's been fun to get out. And funny story is last week, I think I'm going to put a, I have video of this and I don't know. I kind of was not sure if I was going to clip it together and put it on the YouTube channel. But it was kind of funny because I didn't have a lot of time to to go ski last week. And so I had this, you know, you guys know I'm into retro. I like the old stuff. It's fun. And, you know, leather setups are great because it's a good way to get your fitness in quick. And also it's just a fun way to see the mountain and just enjoy, you know, enjoy a couple hours and put kind of test yourself. So I had like two hours and I'm thinking, okay, what could I do to, to challenge myself a little bit? And, uh, when COVID had started last spring, I had this, uh, my girl and I decided we were, Hey, let's, you know, the gyms are closed. It's harder to exercise. So I made some, uh, 50 pound weights out of some sandbags and some gorilla tape and, we started throwing those in our packs and, you know, walking around the block and whatever. So I've had this, uh, it's a multi-use tool, right? But I, but I had this 50 pound backpack and I always keep it in the car in case I got a second, I can go out and, you know, walk a few miles and, and get some exercise in. So I was, I thought to myself, Oh, this is great. I'm going to go up. I'm skiing by myself. It's a, it's a leather day. I'll just, I'm going to cruise groomers and I'll just throw this 50 pound pack on and you know, let's get it done. This will be great. It's re- it's really going to up the level of my, my pain threshold. And this is going to be a great way to get my workout in, in a couple hours. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> grand idea. Um, it, 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 I took a run, felt pretty good. You know, groomers going pretty slow, extra weight, just making sure I'm not going to like twist my knees in half, you know, from a fall or something. And, uh, then the guys from the shop hit like connect with me on the phone. They're like, Oh, Hey, we're here. We should go take a run. And I'm thinking, okay. And so we end up on, if you, if you follow our Instagram account, you'll see old Telly Tay Taylor Johnson has his famed proper warm up where it's, you know, it's a hike up the ridge off the top of the wildcat lift at Alta. And then you ski this little sh- shot down to the cat track. Most days it's a great proper warm up. 
Um, I met those guys up there. I, I didn't disclose that I had a 50 pound pack on my back and, but I proceeded, you know, Oh cool. Madsen's on the leathers. This will be great. You know? And, uh, I proceeded to let them all go and then try to ski down this slope with kind of some manky snow on it. Um, on these, uh, two Oh threes. And, uh, they were like car who XCDs from back in the day and uh 50 pound pack and it was a little harder than i thought so anyways i have done some normal skiing but i thought i'd share that so if you're looking for any uh additional pain in your life and you want to get out and try to do uh something along those lines that's a fantastic way to do it uh <laughs> i think i'll probably go normal skiing next time we're we're, we're gonna head up and uh do some skiing together today and it's going to be fantastic so i'm stoked so uh hopping into this i needed some coffee first because that's going to obviously make my voice sound smoother as i tell you the newsroom and notes for the week probably the most exciting thing that's going on right now is we have sent out our first demo uh, from our Midwest Service and Demo Center this week out of Washburn, Wisconsin. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So this is, for those of you who, who have been listening to the podcast, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're uh, someone new to the podcast, you may not know what I'm, I'm talking about, but we've had these, uh, we're beta testing these extension shops uh, in various areas. And the first one was set up in Washburn, Wisconsin. It's way up in Northern Wisconsin, uh, up by some of the ski resorts there. Uh, if people are coming from the UP of Michigan, uh, upper Minnesota, like Duluth area. And yeah, it's really cool. So, uh, I'll call that a success. So we have put a certified free heel life ski tech and we have given him a full fleet of NTN boots, men and women's, along with some skis that have NTN bindings. And our hope is that we can close the distance between us and you guys out there and give you the opportunity to ski on some equipment that maybe you don't have access to elsewhere. So uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to take some time. I mean, like I said, it's a beta test this year. We're slowly, slowly, if, if there's one thing I've learned about the old telemark business, it's kind of like learning telemark itself. Slow, steady, be patient, don't quit, keep moving forward. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. But to the gentleman uh, that uh, rented skis from us, thank you. Thank you very much. We're not going to have full retail. That's why we're calling. And actually... We are going to call these service and demo centers because that's what you can get there. Service and demo centers. Next item of news. So the next location, we are going to be uh, on the front range of Colorado. So if you're not from Colorado, front range, kind of Denver, Denver to Fort Collins, down to Colorado Springs. I don't, you know, that, that whole front side of the Rockies. Uh, our second beta test location is going to be up and running at the end of this month. These are all by appointment only, but same exact thing. Certified free heel life ski tech, uh, along with a fleet of boots and some skis to demo slash rent, whatever you may want to call it. And who is going to be heading that up, but none other then my good friend, Craig Dosti, who is our gear guru, does it, he has Dosti's view on our YouTube channel and uh, Instagram TV. Uh, he's one of my dear friends and he is the OG of Telemark uh, and just super awesome guy and knows a ton about equipment and was the owner of uh and founder of Kular Magazine, started back in 1988 and really pushed backcountry skiing and telemark uh, 
in those early days. And uh, I'm really stoked to have him part of the Free Heal Life family. He was actually just out here uh, wrapping up his training, uh, his his ski tech and retail training out here in Salt Lake over the weekend. And uh, we shared some good laughs and great conversation. So uh, the best way to find out information about these uh, service and demo centers is you can email us at customer service at freehealllife.com and then uh, we'll get you all dialed in. Uh, the if you can actually go on the website and the Midwest one's live too. So if you want to just reserve stuff, you can actually reserve it. We have a new reservation system and you can actually select the location. So you just go to freehealllife.com. You can look at the boot ski binding combo that's available in the Midwest or at the headquarters in Salt Lake. And uh, you can dial that in and always hit us up with questions. But I am stoked. So thank you guys for believing in what we're doing. And we're just going to keep rolling it out. We're going to have one more of these service and demo centers in New Mexico that I'll be letting you in on. Probably get that up and rolling early February. So, all right. uh, Next thing, 22 Designs. The news there. Bindings are sold out. I think they have some links up there, but basically the bindings that, so that what that means is once once we sell out at Free Heal Life, there's no bindings to go be had from 22 Designs directly. So just keep that in mind. If you're thinking of moving to Outlaw X, NTN stuff or links, or maybe you're, you know, want to hop on, uh, you know, upgrade your 75 millimeter setup, vice, axle, this is the time to do it. So hop on it. Do not hesitate because once they are gone, they are gone for the season. And unless you're finding it used, it's it's uh, it's going to be next season. So uh, more on the media side of things, things to check out. Low down with Taylor. Low down with Taylor Johnson, a.k.a. Telly Tay. Uh, where to mount Telemark skis. This is what he did the past week. They're awesome. They come out on... Uh, let's see, Tuesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Now I can't even think because <laughs> I think Wednesdays, uh, Wednesdays, and then Dosti's view. He did a major 3.0 flat step in function. Those come out on Tuesdays. Subscribe to the channels. Uh, make sure you keep up on those. Let us know what you think. Uh, we've been doing our best to keep up on the comments. We've been having so many more comments. It's amazing. So thank you for doing and interacting with us there. That really helps us out. And uh, we're doing our best to kind of get uh, get back to you as, as fast as we can. And uh, for those of you that like fun stuff, the debut of our uh, service and demo center, Ski Tech, Keith Opperman, checking in last week with Alpine Heel Removal Tip number seven, The Farmer. So if you like to see uh, us figure out uh, creative ways to take off your Alpine Heel pieces, um, please check out that series and uh, we've got a new one coming up this week uh, Alpine Heel Removal Tip number 8 The Slap Shot so for all you hockey fans out there pay attention subscribe to the channel check it out and uh, it's good stuff that was a long newsroom and notes everyone so thank you for hanging in there and uh, <laughs> listening to all all that exciting stuff. It's kind of nice. There's actually a bunch of things going on. So um, on that note, I'm going to take a, a, a quick sip of my delicious coffee here so that I can continue being caffeinated and share with you this mailbag episode. That was delicious. <laughs> so let's hop into this, you guys. Mailbag episode number six. Um. You guys send in some amazing stuff to podcast at freelife.com. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do this. Like I, I've continued to say is this, the podcast as a project, if you will, has been an amazing tool of just like reaching out and talking to these different communities and individuals and man, it's such a neat way to connect. Cause you know, we see you got customers, you know, with the shop and, you know, other things I've done in the past, but this is such like a cool way to just get, get it on, you know, tape and 
put it on the internet and and you guys actually listen to it. So thank you for <laughs> spending your time uh, talking about it uh, to your friends and uh, hopefully you're digging the subject matter and the guests that I'm having and gear talk. So um, yeah, so let's let's hop right into this. This first one's uh, from Bobby. He just says, hey, Josh, excellent work is always on the podcast. There's one thing I especially liked about the Nat Ross episode. You guys talked about how he got into Telemark. Then you talked about how he got out of Telemark. Uh, most guests seemingly avoid going there, being that the podcasts exist to help spread Telemark and all. But I think it's really important, especially for those of us who'd like to see or even help Telemark grow. It's crucial to understand why formerly passionate telemarkers no longer partake. Uh, the better we understand these perspectives, the better we can help the sport spread. Keep up the great work, Bobby. So, hey, Bobby, thanks. Um, yeah, this isn't. I was glad he touched on that too because I've often thought that we. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's an interesting. Uh, actually, Craig Dossie and I were talking about this yesterday because you know people get in get in and out of this thing over the years, and you know when you've been around it. You know, I'm going on 20 years of, of being around it and more of, you know, a business slash industry, you know, sense of sense of the word and, and longer as a participant. And, and he's been in longer. And man, I mean, honestly, a lot of people, I, I guess there's different ways to look at it. I think, you know, Nat was more of a, a contributor, so to speak, with Tough Guy Productions, making movies and demo tours and events. And yeah, I agree. Um you know, I think it's, uh, we can learn a lot from what has worked and what has not worked. Um, I often say, this is a lot of the reason I like to try to preserve history in the shop, for instance, is man, after you've been around a couple decades, like I have, one of the interesting things that I see is, you know, you're going to see fresh blood come in and, and young people and, um, and have great ideas and they're super fired up, you know, and they're like, I'm going to do this and this. And, and, uh, one, I always try not to discourage that. I mean, that's completely, um, anti everything I stand for. Like we do want to spread telemark. We want to share it with other people. Um, but, but with that said, like you're saying, Bobby, I often like to look at things that I've seen happen from experience And, you know, a lot of things, there's a lot of repetitive thinking with not knowing the history of what's been, what's happened before, or things have modified over, over the years. And I, man, I, I try to share that as often as I can. (laughs) I'll tell you one thing about getting older is I, I understand a lot more about being younger and how I just did not listen to anybody, which is part, honestly, free heal life probably wouldn't be (laughs) if I listened to people you know, 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't be here today. So, uh, I guess what I'm saying is young people listen to me, but don't listen to me (laughs) and everybody else out there. No, I think we can learn from other people. It kind of brings up the other thing too, is just participants, um, getting out of telemark. I'm always interested in that. You know, there's obvious things like people are like, Oh man, the, the, you know, the biggest argument is always like, well, AT skiing got easier and better equipment. So all telemarkers left. I here, look, here's how I've always looked at it. You were, if you really jumped ship, uh, to AT and you're that bitter about your, all the years you had to telemark ski, you probably didn't want to be a telemark skier in the first place. And if you guys ever go back and listen to, uh, you know, some of these earlier episodes, I think, especially, I think, somebody wrote in about episode two. I think I talked about the is telemark dead question and all that. But, um, you know, I generally just to kind of reiterate my stance on that is many people that are like, have moved to AT skiing and kind of bag on telemark skiing. Now it's really, they look at the, evo- they look at a singular evolutionary plane of thought and in this and what i mean by that is because backcountry skiing had was really grew through telemark skiing for many many years and so people did that they they felt like telemark evolved into at to alpine touring and that's just not really 
that's just not really how it is. I mean, Telemark is always Telemark. AT is Alpine Touring. That's always been Alpine. You're making a different turn going downhill. So um, when people... Uh, when people get out of uh, telemark, though, I think there's yeah, it's I, I'm always interested in that too. Like, why do you get out of telly? And I think that's something for us to watch. So, without going down too crazy of a rabbit hole, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'd love to see why people get out too. And and I'm glad you brought that point up, Bobby. Um, that's a good one. And I'm glad you're liking the podcast, brother. It's uh, like I said, it's been really fun. Uh, next one is from Andreas from Sweden. We love all our Scandinavian friends. <laughs> I'm just trying to go th- make sure I'm I'm not, I'm going to paraphrase some of this stuff. Um, uh, it kind of starts off right at the beginning. The, the, the truth is I have been trying to quit telemark for many years but i keep coming back uh he started back in the late 90s reva bindings a hybrid uh leather boot crispy d racer that's actually a pretty cool boot not a lot of people know about i like that kind of like a merrill super comp if uh, for all you history buffs out there um uh, and then he went uh went to snowboarding and then uh basically what happened is like a couple years ago i decided to make a comeback and bought tx pros with 22 Designs Outlaws and skied on a pair of Icelandic Saber 89. I never felt comfortable on this setup. I do not know if it was the NTN thing or the ski, but I sold the gear last year thinking I was done with Telly. But now I'm thinking of making one more attempt to rise from the dead. Uh, I've been listening to your superb episode on 75 millimeter versus NTN and have started thinking on gear again. I know it's hard to give advice over email, but what do you recommend based on my history? If I go NTN, what boot binding combo would you recommend? I have also been uh, thinking about buying a Scarpa T2 and something like a Volley Switchback. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, awesome question, Andreas. This is a really common thing, and I'm glad you I'm glad you caught the 75 millimeter versus NTN episode um, because you know I obviously I talk a lot about one's not bet you know one's not better you know it's like not really versus <laughs> even though that's the title of the episode you know it's not like to put head to head and and make one better over the other and i think you kind of nailed it in here you know you start in the late 90s you're skiing this older gear i skipped over a couple of your setups but he talks about vole three pin cable low you know lower cut t4s and then you jump to this ntn stuff higher cuff boot and you know outlaws obviously a stiffer binding so here's here's the thing to kind of go over this again is you you want to have the setup that makes the best sense right like it feels like telemark to you and that's that's again how we approach stuff at free heel life the shop is you know if you walk in and you told us all this stuff in the shop that's actually what we want to hear because all of us know what it feels like to ski on a T4, a three pin cable binding, three pins, leathers, you know, and that's why I always like to emphasize the history is so we can understand how to take you into the future if that's what is the best solution. So, you know, I think that from a retail perspective, yeah, I mean, we're not the shop that's going to be like, you know, you walk in and you're like, oh, you know, last time I telemarked was like way back in the day. Here's where I came from. And we're like, well, that's just not going to cut it anymore. You need new stuff. In my opinion, that's totally bogus because telemark in and of itself, one, like I always say, it's a downhill technique. And uh, two, there's many eras of telemark in the sense of the sensations of equipment over the decades have changed. Is it all telemark? 100% it is all telemark. The technique, the the general, the generalities of the technique are the same. Now, you may, like I said, if you're skiing a 50-pound pack with three-pin 
bindings, leather boots, like the way you approach the technique might be differently. Uh, but the big difference between new and old or somewhere in the middle is the feeling. So, um, so to get to the heart of this, what kind of recommendation would I make if you just came into the shop? Um, look, you went outlaw and TX pros. I think if you want to go with a four buckle boot, you're in, you're in a good realm in terms of the flex coming from a T4, um, you know, the, the flex of the T4 is a lower cuff. So that's where one big change is going to be felt is a, a taller boot. But in terms of the flex, I don't think you're going to have a, a big problem going to outlaw X from a three pin cable binding, um, or any like older cable binding, like a G3 Targa, a Riva BD, you know, O two O one. It's a big jump because of what we call activeness of the binding the pit where your ball of your foot is pivoting on the ski is much more aggressive on these new outlaw x's or outlaw whatever you were skiing it's the same thing uh on the ski side of it um that's usually where people get tripped up if you're coming from a, a, an a earlier era of telemark equipment where there was a lot of neutral feel with the cable and you go to something that's very active in terms of it's activating the ball of your foot differently. And I, we have some videos on our YouTube you can look up. I had there's a video called Activity versus Stiffness, and that can that can help you out a little bit. But that's usually where it trips people up. That's the first problem. So the second part is you get tripped up because you don't know how to customize the springs. So I would say if you went back to Outlaw X, it's a great binding. But go go on the lowest setting on a one, which is going to be softer, less preload on the spring, and that might help. But with that said, your idea of going back to like a T2 Eco, which is, you know, it's going to be a step up from the T4, but it's, and it's, it, but it's not quite as aggressive in, in the height of the boot. Um, and, and a little bit softer than the TX Pro. So T2 with a, sw a regular switchback, I think would be from Volet, would be a good option for you. Um, I would not recommend you go, if you go the route of the T2 Eco boot, I would not go the route of switchback X2. Reason being, the, the toe on the X2 version of the switchback from Volet is it's a uh, elongated toe, which once you once you understand activity versus stiffness, it'll, it's going to make sense. So go watch that video if you guys are out there thinking, what are you talking about? It's obviously, I'm trying to do my best of explaining it, but a visual is good with that. So basically the pivot point, when you elongate the toe, okay, the springs attach further back, making further back on the toe piece and where the ball of the foot begins to pivot is further back from your toe, which makes it feel less neutral. So we call it activity, but it's like, it, it, it's basically like if you have a three pin, there's like it's there's no activity it's neutral you're pivoting on your literally your toe so you have to push the ball of the foot down to the ski it's much more manual you know it, outlaw x switch back x2 the k the where the cable hinges is activating the ball of your foot sooner in the turn making it some people think it's stiffness but it's activity and then the stiffness is in the spring so andreas that's what i'm thinking Look, first off, like many of us, the <laughs> don't quit, you know, don't quit. Because I think what what's going on is it's more about maintaining the sensation in your head about what telemark is to you. That's what you got to get after, brother. You know, you got to go, you got to get back on that, the proverbial horse. You got to get back in the same you know, like we, like I talk about, there's, there's kind of this pocket, you know, it's like when you first learn to telemark and it clicks for you and then you learn how to get in that state of mind where you're good in that particular zone. And, and that's what telemark is to you. 
and in the in the gear is such a big part of that so that's that's uh i'd say option one go regular switchback scarpa t2 eco second choice i'd say go tx if you want to go ntn go tx pro but honestly maybe go to like lynx or go to like majo and and you know if you're not afraid of tech toe just because you can get a little more diversity in terms of the 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 feel of that binding hopefully that helps brother but uh hey stick with it you know uh, obviously something's pulling you back i think you just need to find the right setup so that it it feels like telemark to you and uh, nobody can tell you how it's supposed to feel man but there's a couple there's a couple options i think that'll get you closer to what's going on in your head and um i think if you played around with that a little bit you might be able to to have a better option of of where to go with it all right so <clears throat> next one is from jack hey josh stumbled across your website and your podcast while looking for a new tele gear setup heard about your quote unquote store in the midwest i was super excited to hear this i'm from minneapolis and can't find any gear locally to get my hands on or to test it out on snow your staff has put me in contact with Keith and he has been great to work with. He said, I was the first demo out of the Midwest. I'm really looking forward to get on the snow with the demo gear next week. Thanks for reigniting my passion for telly, Jack. Man, this, this fires me up, you guys. I wanted to read this because Jack, thank you so much. I'm so glad you came across our stuff and that it worked out that you were in Minneapolis. You know, I used to show my movies uh, at, at uh, Midwest Mountaineering there, right in Minneapolis, many years ago when they did carry telly. And uh, so it's, and I, 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 when when I came up with the idea to do the service and demo centers, you're the exact type of person that I that I was thinking about because I remember going through cities where you once could get something i could even show a telemark movie and people showed up because that was the shop you know and uh now they can't get it um shout out to midwest mountaineering though i talked to them the other day just so you guys know if you are in the minneapolis area i talked with those guys they're they're stoked they are aware that we are in the zone and uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna make sure that they have some um some cards to direct people to us so minneapolis people if you are there minnesota uh yeah we're 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 in that zone we're not too far away. i mean washburn wisconsin's a little bit of ways away but if you're going up to like indian head blackjack white face or not uh white cap not white face that's like in new york <laughs> but uh yeah just know we're in that area so thank you so much it's so cool to read this that makes it worth it for us you know just knowing that there's one person that we've been able to affect change and uh you know for lack of a better way of saying it you guys to grow telemark you know you got to put your money where your mouth is you know and that's that's uh that's what we're doing and the only way we can figure out figure out more is you know stumbling through this beta process you know and figuring it out and uh it's a it's an amazing problem set to put in front of us and one that i am determined to figure out and i've got an amazing crew of people and uh keith opperman is is an amazing guy up there in washburn we'd love to hook you up uh and it's just it's just cool to see that so thank you thank you it's uh yeah, gets I get a little choked up. It's 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 just a it's it's cool to see that happening. Okay, so this next one is from Mambir. I hope I pronounced that right, my my brother. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of jump into his question. He says, "I want to ask you a question that I've been playing around with in my head. Do you think?" A single boot can work between an NTN, NTN low tech, and an Alpine binding. I was imagining that a boot like the crispy Evo NTN boot may work with a binding such as 22 Designs Outlaw X as well as Majos. 
with a Dinafit style tech heel, like in the Majo uh, does offer that. And he kind of goes on to talk about, you know, um, let's see, this has me thinking about boot binding combo that can lock down with the heel will be advantageous and really sketchy terrain should I need it. So if you go back, I've, we've talked about this a couple times in previous episodes. A lot of people don't, this, here's, the, here's the first answer to your question. The original Scarpa TX boot was actually made to be that boot because at the time in 2008 when that boot came out, it the tech inserts in the toe were actually made for Dinafit bindings. And so the Scarpa TX, it was, a, it was an orange boot, three buckle. It was actually, the first one was pretty stiff actually, but it had tech toe and it had a tech heel. And it also, when you bought the boots, they came with what, what we call a toe puck. And it was like this black plastic piece and with a little metal uh, attachment to it. And that attachment actually fit in the crampons, uh, the crampon slot on a Dinafit toe. And it sat under the ball of your foot. The reason being when you have bellows, the front part of your boot where, where it flexes on the ball of your foot, if you don't in a, in, in a, in a Alpine touring binding, like a, like a Dinafit back in 2008, you had to put that puck underneath the ball of your foot. Otherwise you would do what's called flexing out the, the bellow would flex and then your boot would release because it would change the distance from the, the toe to the heel. So short answer to your question is that boot already existed. <laughs> um, the tech heel in newer boots like TX Pro, uh, the heel has gone away. And Scott Voodoo's, they've taken the heel insert out. And now they're left with just the toe. So the, uh, the other component to this is, from a historical perspective is tech toe. This is, <laughs> this is the reminder. Tech toe in NTN boots was not put there for Telemark bindings. Okay, so let me repeat that. The tech toe in a Telemark boot was not put there for Telemark bindings because at the time that they put those in, that was the idea. Like we should make one boot that Telemark skiers and AT skiers can buy and use in both bindings. Okay, so that's it. Uh, now, the, the beauty of tinkering Telemark engineer-minded people is they saw that tech toe and they go, oh, wait a second. You know what? We've got tech toe in a Telemark boot now. We should make a Telemark tech toe NTN binding. And it started with uh, Olympus Mountain Gear making the TTS, which is technically not a true NTN in the, in the sense that it uses the second heel. It uses more of like a traditional 75 millimeter cable back end but then you could use a tech toe on the front. Now, I guess the next part of this question is, do I think we should have that boot moving forward? I am a hard no on this one. And I'll tell you why. AT skiers need to have AT boots. And if you're going to just, if you're going to be an AT skier, uh, I just, I think you're going to get better performance out of an AT boot. Telemark boots, you're going to get a better Telemark boot. I'm not a fan of serving two masters with one boot. It just does not make sense to me. And, you know, unlike 2008, where pretty much you were only dealing with Dina fit, you know, nowadays you're dealing with so many different types of bindings. I just, I don't see it being an advantageous thing from a, you know, uh, from a manufacturer. And I know there's this argument because like what you're saying, you know, of course, like if we could save money doing one, you know, one boot for two things and you might want to lock it down and, you know, sketchy terrain or whatever, you know, even that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a telemark skier. I still make an Alpine turn in sketchy terrain 
I think if you're, you know, I've said this before, if you're really going to get after some crazy mountaineering, ski mountaineering type stuff, where in most cases you're just puckered up and you're not real, like you're just so exposed that it would be dangerous to make telemark turns and maybe you're not as experienced of a telemark skier. I mean, honestly, at that point, <laughs> you're not going to hear me say it that often, like, hey, go be an alpine skier. But, you know, there are there's there's times for P-turns, uh, which are parallel turns. That is a technique that we need to know to be great telemark skiers. You also need to know how to make a parallel turn, you know. Um, this makes you a more w- well-rounded telemark skier. But, yeah, um, I, I don't I don't want to digress too much, but I'm I, I don't think we're going to see that boot ever again. And I don't think it's a good choice to go that route anyways. You know, I just you know, you can get it in a crispy boot, you know, you can get you still get the heel inserts and tech toe and in crispy. But I you know, the other manufacturers have moved away from it for liability purposes. So Thanks for that question. That's a good one. And uh, yeah, some of those talks going back over early NTN stuff. I know Dusty and I have talked about it. Me and Taylor have talked about it. It's it's there's a the ingenuity that's come out of literally just putting that tech toe in the boots is it's awesome. I mean, it really is like reignited the binding conversation, and uh, we got a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> a lot of cool stuff coming out that. Uh, you know, has kept kind of kept uh, innovation moving forward. So had they not made that one boot for all back in 08, you wouldn't have TTS, Volet TTS now, uh, Lynx or Majo. So keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully that helps. Thanks for listening to the, to the podcast and asking those types of questions. I love that. Uh, this next one's from, from Jorn Arv and he is from Norway. And he says, I grew up in uh, Brunkeberg, just five kilometers away from Morgadal along the E-134, closer to Oslo. Uh, and our whole childhood was about telemark skiing, jumping, doing all kinds of stunts in the snow. I'm so familiar with this culture and it is something just deep inside us from this area. Actually, I don't think we have so many specific telemark communities here in Norway as you guys have in the States because we have it more in quote unquote our spine. But over the years, more and more people fix their heels with all their silly arguments, mostly about bad knees, but I think it's more about uh, being lazy or a skill problem. (laughs) I read that part because I thought that was pretty awesome. So I agree. Honestly, uh, like I was saying earlier, <laughs> there's, <laughs> I think unfortunately a lot of backcountry skiers were telemark skiers by default. And like the minute they could get out, they were like, Oh yeah, the skis, you know, the, the knees just aren't going to keep up anymore. Those quadriceps are just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just griping, griping, griping. Um, but that's, it. that's so cool that you're from that area. And, uh, I, I absolutely love that zone. It's it's amazing. I If you haven't listened to any of the stuff I've done talking about Morgadol, uh, go, ch- go listen to those. It is an amazing, amazing place to go to. It's where Telemark Skiing started. It's the cradle of modern ski sport, kind of where it all began. But uh, So Jornarv says, so the question is outlaw or links? Uh I really fancy this pivoting uh, ski mode on the switchback after hiking with the Prophet 130, uh, which is a line ski and R8 from Rotofella bindings for years. So I'm excited to try tech binding, but will it really last with my aggressive skiing? Uh, I think the tech toe will break or the flex plate or so many uh, other things. Uh, even if I'm backcountry skiing 80% of the time, uh, I definitely think the downhill is more important than the touring uphill and the weight is not really that important. Uh, hey, I'm telemarking. If I was so into weight, I would be doing rando. <laughs> rando bleep, 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 bleep. Uh, or uphill Nordic, as he calls it. Anyways, the gist of uh, um, 
the gist of what he was kind of getting at is, and he, there was some other stuff that he kind of talked about um, that kind of gave some background on, or, you know, cable bindings. He was skiing in the, in the road of fell and just breaking stuff over and over to the point where uh, he couldn't get them warranted anymore. They're like, yeah, it might be you, the way you ski. So, you know, your question of outlaw or links based on you talking about skiing hard, not really caring about weight too much, and being super aggressive on gear, 100% the answer is Outlaw X over Lynx. You know, not necessarily from like a, you know, some some durability, but, you know, even just the skis you're describing, skiing on, and just it just sounds like you're getting after it. Outlaw X, yeah, I mean, you're not talking a ton of extra weight. You're going to get great tour mode simple, not a lot of parts. When things do break, it's rare, not that often, and it's easy to fix, you know? So, uh, outlaw X a hundred percent for, for you, my man. And, uh, great to know that, um, you're still telemarking after all these years. And, and thanks for sharing a little bit about how it was to grow up in, in telemark Norway. I love hearing that stuff. And I loved how you talked about just doing all the stunts and jumping around. And I love emphasizing that aspect of stuff because it's just, it's incredible. Uh, that zone and the history of Telemark is so cool because it really is so much more of it was about jumping and, uh, just the fun of skiing, you know, and, uh, it's just an amazing place. It wasn't, it didn't, it didn't, you know, like I always say, American telemark skiers in the mid 1970s, when they kind of brought it back here, it definitely had more of a Nordic skinny ski vibe to it. And, uh, you know, when you go back to Norway and kind of dig through some of that history, it was a very different vibe. So again, if you can ever get to Morgadal, especially after this post COVID situation, go to Norway, uh, immerse yourself in, in the telemark culture there. And, uh, it's, it's worth spending some time, uh, just feeling that place for real. I mean, just absorbing the energy around that place is amazing. So good question, my man. A lot of people ask that one. So, all right. Uh, next one is from our friend John and, uh, he, uh, let's see, he, he started the podcast and then he went back and listened to like episode one, two, which seems like forever ago now, but I'm, I'm glad you guys are digging back into some of that first stuff. So I, thanks for taking the time to do that. It's really cool to hear. Uh, he just says, uh, love the story of your self-directed intro to telly. Uh, I know that library. I, I, I myself saw a guy that kind of looked like Steve Barnett in backcountry gear telling down. Uh, a side hill at Mount Hood in 1991. That was my quote unquote cool. I got to do that moment. And I just, I love that little part of that because I get a lot of these people right in. And I want you guys to know, even though sometimes I'm, I'm a slacker on getting back to those emails. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's something I can improve on. I guess that's my new year's resolution. Make sure I, I stay up a little more on those emails. But with that said, I love, absolutely love hearing your guys' story. Guys and girls, love hearing your stories. I, this is what I think we all connect on out there. There's, there's, there's so much work that goes into learning this thing. So if you're a beginner out there and, and you haven't, or you haven't tried Telemark, there, there's going to be a moment where it clicks. And whether you, it, it, that, from that one moment where it clicks, that's the first brick, you know? Finally, you know, you're out kind of rolling around trying to figure out what's going on. And that moment that it clicks where you link two turns, you know, that is brick number one of the wall. And then from there, you're just building brick by brick, brick by brick. You know, I'll tell you that first brick's hard to get to. And so I love when people just write that because any telemarker knows that there's that's cool. I got to do that moment. So, um, if you got one of those moments, I would love to hear it, whether it's from 1977 or 1995 or, you know, 2020, 
2021, whatever. Write in. Let me know. I, I love hearing how it clicked for you. So, But John goes on and says, uh, regarding the idea that Telly is dead, I really appreciate distinguishing between the retail component of the activity versus the soul of the activity. We had three awesome shops, backcountry climbing focused shops that sold Telly gear in the Seattle area, now closed or no longer carrying Telly gear. Uh, three years ago, in, into the last one, I ha- he, he went in and the young buck looked at him quizzically when he asked about Telly gear and then he smirked. Um, and uh, I'm glad that you vibed on that. Again, if you want to, if, if, if you've heard Telemark is dead, go listen to that early episode. I think it's episode two. Um, and, and I talk a lot about this. Telemark is not dead. It's the silliest thing anybody has ever said ever, ever in the history of talking shit about Telemark skiing. <laughs> I, can't, I honestly can't think of like a sillier thing to say. So now what is dead? Exactly what he said. Telemark retail died. The way we sold Telemark equipment through backcountry shops, a lot of those shops have closed. Seattle's a great example, you know? Um, I don't know all three he's talking about, you know, I know Marmot Mountain Works had a place up there. I believe in Bellevue, Marmot Mountain Works also had a place in Berkeley down in California and it went away. That was the spot there, you know, Berkeley, San Francisco. That's where you got it before you went up to the Sierra or whatever. So I, again, these zones, um, they need stuff, you know, so, um, we just got to figure that out. So. Hopefully, hopefully, John, if it might take us a couple years, but I, I know you guys up in Seattle, you guys support our shop immensely and, uh, and, and we love you guys up there. So hang in there. And, uh, yeah, I like that the young buck that there's every, every ski shop, every Alpine ski shop. Sometimes I just go in, there's like the young buck at the Alpine ski shops that used to carry telly. And, uh, I don't know if you get bored and you want to, I actually, sometimes I'll do that if I'm traveling because I know they don't sell telly <laughs> anymore and I'll just go in and ask them. I mean, you just, it's kind of funny to talk to people. Just be like, hey, do you guys have telly gear? I'm super stoked to get into it. And then they'll be like, dude, telly's dead, man. And I'm just like, oh, really? Oh, bummer. Okay, cool. <laughs> so anyways, I get a kick out of that. But uh, yeah, anyways, John goes on and the only other thing I was going to say that I thought was pretty awesome is, uh, he, he, let's see, he says he bought a, he bought something off Craigslist and it ended up being like some boots that I came from our shop. So, and then, he, and then he came to Utah and bumped into another guy that we know. So it's honestly, we're seeing more and more of this. I mean, we're year number six at the shop. I love hearing when you guys bump into each other, other free heel lifers around the world. And, you know, you just you guys can share gear experiences maybe you find a ski buddy it's awesome so thanks for helping us uh build this thing up and just keep on rocking and rolling um i think uh i'm gonna end on this one this is uh from andrew this is just a quick one he's writing he says i'm writing from fernie british columbia up in canada wanted to thank you for the great energy on the podcast and uh he goes on let's see um he he had bought some bindings from us and just had a a a great customer experience so thank you for saying that uh and if you're international you guys like you guys can that's we can talk to you on the phone we can email you we love making time for people so don't hesitate on that but the one thing I wanted to bring up is he brings up how difficult that exchange is, taxes, tariffs, all that stuff once we're crossing borders and stuff with equipment. And uh, he just said how it, that it's a big hit, you know? And I just wanted to bring up, like, we're always looking, just like we're kind of beta testing all sorts of other stuff. This is something we've known since day one. And, uh, you know, it's it sucks when you buy like a $20 t-shirt and the thing's like 40 bucks by the time you get it on your back, you know, and, uh, we get that and we're aware of it and, uh, we're working on it. So 
that's all I'm going to say on that. But, um, yeah, we're, we're always working on it and, and thank you for bringing things to light. You know, if you're having trouble getting stuff in other countries, you know, reach out to us and just let us know, you know, I, I know maybe it's not a solution or we don't have something quick to do. Um, but we like knowing about it cause Hey, we're in this the long haul and we want to figure it out. So, uh, he ended this one. He just said, it was great to hear about how you came to the idea of free hill life in your, in the last podcast he listened to, but you didn't finish the story about how you made the leap uh, from what free hill life was to opening your re- retail store. That's a big leap. And I'm sure there's a good story behind it. I mean, honestly, it'd probably take a whole podcast to kind of get into the whole, how the retail shop started, but I'll, there, around Thanksgiving, I did a kind of a gratitude podcast and was talking about free heel life. I mean, the, the, the free heel life, the phrase started all the way back in 2002. And it was, had kind of this, if you want to go back, listen to that, there's kind of this story about it, but just to kind of give you an answer, um, Andrew is like, uh, so kind of in the middle of that whole thing around 2009, I became the editor of telemark skier magazine and worked for the publisher there for a couple years. And then I actually, uh, purchased Telemark gear magazine in 2012. Well, I, I moved back to salt. They were based out of Vermont. I came back to salt Lake and originally, um, I rented this room in the shop. Like if you, it, once you come to the shop, you'll see there's one room where we keep all the new parts. And that's, I rented that room for 150 bucks and kind of was like, Oh, this is going to be the telemark skier office or whatever. But the whole building was vacant. Um, my brother actually played in a band, had a little recording studio there, but you know, that, that was it. But I had this idea, funny enough, originally, um, well during, during, uh, let me back up during, during telemark skier magazine days, I, I kept free heel life kind of in place, so to speak. So if, if any of you ever had the print magazine back in the day, um, my editor's note in the print magazines became the free heel life. And that was my, my editor's note every time a magazine was published. And I used to sneak free heel life into like certain designs or, or whatnot. And, uh, so I kind of kept it alive, at least in my head, right during that point, but I wasn't doing free heel life as like an entity. And then when I bought Telemark's gear magazine and I was like, all right, now what, you know, what are we going to do? And I had this office in this vacant building. That was the first time where I was like, man, I wonder if we can come up with like a retail space. And so the original idea was to make that like almost like a Telemark skier magazine, like branded store, if you will. And, uh, the way that it became free heel life is I had the unity tracks logo from before in that original story. And I went back to my buddy, Dave, who designed that the unity tracks logo. And I said, Hey, could I use this unity tracks logo in conjunction with the telemark skier magazine stuff? And he just wrote back. He's like, yeah, he's like, you know, I made that for free heel life. And it really needs to stick with free heel life. And, uh, so, uh, I, I was like, well, all right. And basically it it took a couple years before I actually pulled the trigger on opening the shop, but I really wanted the unity tracks logo to be part of, of that just cause it's just a rad logo. It represents something cool. And so basically that's how free hill life, the shop started 2014 And, uh, you know, that was it. We opened the doors and there wasn't, like we always say, it was a glorified t-shirt shop the first year. We did not even sell Telemark boots. So pretty unbelievable to think how far it's come. And, uh, yeah. So hopefully that gives you a little more insight into how I made the jump to the retail stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's been a fun journey nonetheless. So, all right, guys, I think that's uh, that's it for today. Awesome questions. So fun to just chop it up about all this telemark stuff that you guys are writing in about. Uh, hopefully, I answered your questions correctly. Like I said, I love hearing from you. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't hesitate to write me. I guarantee at some point I'll catch up, especially as the snow starts melting if I don't get back to you. But this was good. Hopefully... If you've been waiting on an answer, hopefully I got to it today. 
and I uh, just love that you guys are writing in. Um, how you can support us. I know some of you guys have made donations to paypal.me slash free heal life. Thank you so much. That is, it's so rad to see, you know, we want to do the podcast and put them out there and it's a vehicle for us to talk about the shop, what we do, how we can, um, how we can serve you guys as customers, but every little bit helps, you know, and we love that. So like I said, you can always make a donation, paypal.me slash free life. Of course, check out free We want to be your preferred telemark shop and we are doing our best to carry what you need and answer your questions. You can always get a hold of my staff at customer service at freehealllife.com. And we're, you know, usually within 24 hours, we usually get back to you. 24, let's say 24 to 48. Uh, you can call in. We're op- the shop's open uh, Tuesday through Friday, noon to 7, Saturday, 10 to 7 closed on Sundays and Mondays, but we would love to help you. Uh, articles, other stoke, telemarkskier.com. Subscribe to the mailing list. It's in the notes. We do a weekly email and keep you kind of in touch with all this stuff that we're putting out. Like I said, YouTube channel, awesome place to be. Got a lot of stuff coming out on that. And you can always email me direct at podcast at freehealllife.com. Thank you so much for listening. And I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Uh, Every Monday, new episode drops. So share this with your Telemark friends and uh, share with your Alpine friends too. Snowboard friends, whoever. We love them all. Love you guys. And until next week, spread Telemark always.